Welcome everyone. Six Fig Stock Trading here. Hopefully you guys uh, are having a good day. Thank you for watching. After you watch this video, uh, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. Now, a lot of turbulence right now surrounding Bitcoin. Here's why. Uh, options expire tomorrow. Lots and lots of options. I've heard speculation. People just don't know what Bitcoin's going to do. Is it going to skyrocket? Is it going to plummet? Are the options market makers going to be buying calls or puts? Now, let me get this straight. If you were buying calls or puts and you are a market maker, somebody that's able to influence Bitcoin, especially a huge, a huge asset, uh, you would not drive the market down first in order to buy puts. You would drive the market down if you knew you were going to be buying call options. Wouldn't it make more sense to drive the market down, purchase the options when everything is at 48 to 51,000? versus 60,000 and then let the market fly uh, in an upward direction uh, because you want to make a lot of money. Uh, you wouldn't move the market down first just to buy puts and hope that it goes back down, uh, trapping yourself in a potential bounce. So let's figure out if Bitcoin is where it should be right now in fact i think it's just right where it should be if not better and here's why i'm looking at data from 2013 to current day march 25th 12:39 p.m central time and the year is 2021 now a lot of this older data is kind of shaky some of this stuff here uh you know these long wicks all the way down perhaps these could have been real dips, uh, but I suspect that uh, back in 2013, there probably wasn't a whole lot of uh, accurate data pertaining to Bitcoin charts because nobody gave a shit about Bitcoin. One thing that has piqued my interest on this chart, though, was this area here. And the reason why I'm ruling out this area here, it's just too volatile. Uh, I don't think that Bitcoin went from $250 down to $0, if you can see that. So I think these are false flags on the chart. But this chart over here, this dip here seems to be genuine. Uh, right before things start moving back up. So this is the measuring point I'm going to use going forward. Uh, let's, let's do a pitchfork. Let's measure off this low in 2013 to this high in 2013 so july to december and then we'll go ahead and hit this right there this low here or we may come up and move this actually to yeah let's stick with this i like that let's refine this just a hair Okay, I like what I'm seeing right here. Now, what does this pitchfork do? Well, the shift pitchfork allows us to study price action in between support and resistance. Now, this big line here, excuse me one second. I'm parched. This big orangish reddish line is the median line. Anything below this is considered support channels. Anything above this is considered resistance channels. Let's see how Bitcoin looks by making this simple measurement all the way back in 2013. See something? Interesting, huh? So we did fall out of the channel a little bit. This isn't necessarily a super hard break, 
but this is a break. And you can see it consolidated and hopped back up into the channel. I'm not really too concerned about something like this, especially when it happened six years ago. Again, this could be messed up data being fed to TradingView. One thing I do want to note is look at how this price action played perfectly within these channels. Uh, here we have resistance, support, you know, resistance, resistance, a little support here. You can, you, you can kind of see, you don't need me to explain all this to you. Uh, very accurate, uh, to say the least, uh, these channels. So uh, we are in resistance territory with Bitcoin. And you might have heard these predictions about how Bitcoin is going to 300,000, 100,000, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now keep in mind, this is a daily chart. So you can see, uh, you know, anything this far out, you know, all I'm saying is each candle is a day. Uh, so it takes a long time to try to figure out these patterns. Uh, and so the next thing I want to kind of expand on is, you know, how do we know when the next, uh, I guess when the next bullish event is going to occur? Well, on the daily chart, one thing that we can keep an eye on is RSI. We can look at the MACD, but some other things we can do is we can look at uh, Fibonacci time zones. Time zones are interesting uh, simply because by measuring a simple, uh, you know, high to a low, we can get a lot of information on when markets are going to move. Uh, for example, just by measuring from this low to this high, uh, you know, these, these Fibonacci time zones are, are good at predicting new highs, new lows, uh, potential pivot points and reversals, things of that nature. Now, this isn't necessarily the pivot point or the, the measurements I want to take, uh, but let's go ahead and look at something more recent, shall we? So let's just go ahead uh, and, and measure from, mm, we'll run a couple measurements. We'll measure from this low to this high, see if we can correlate anything. And what we're looking for, folks, is data and information. What did this coin do or stock do after we use this Fibonacci time zone? Well, this was a good indication that a reversal was imminent. It reversed. Uh, you can see the same thing here. Good indication that a reversal was imminent. Uh, you know, so this thing took off. We do have another Fibonacci time zone on August 11th, 21. That's interesting because I've heard a lot of speculation uh, about how this is a multi-year bull run, how the end of the market will come in September of 21. It's interesting that we're seeing uh, data pinch to around that time on the Fibonacci time zone. As far as Bitcoin's concerned right now, um, as far as the price is concerned, we can absolutely if we do not, bear with me one second, folks, sorry. If Bitcoin cannot come and bounce off this 48 level, you know, this 50,000 level, uh, and retrace back up to the 68, 70,000 level, uh, I think Bitcoin is in trouble. You can see it's already tried once, came back down, uh, reversed off of this, uh, this, support or this resistance line here attempted again got a little bit higher uh, again corrected and we are almost down to the support and resistance line again interestingly enough i think we could be seeing another uh, reversal happen uh, right at, right here because of the options contracts that are expiring let's just do a quick measurement see if we can come up with anything
Eh, I mean, it's tough to tell with this Fibonacci sometimes. Uh, you know, here we measured from this high to this low. This is such a short time frame that it might give us some short-term uh, time frame results. It accurately predicted a reversal here, and it active, actively uh, predicted a high here. So would I consider March 28th uh, a legitimate time to look for a potential reversal? Possibly. We're not going to see a new high. Not going to see a new low, almost guaranteed, unless this thing death crosses through the 50 and 200. I would definitely say March 28th, uh, or within that time, you know, we should see maybe a, a reversal and start of another bull run. Otherwise, uh, you know, we, we're definitely looking for a price tag of around 68000 to 71000 in that time frame uh, from March 28th to April 18th. And I think if the bottom falls off, because it's, a, it's important to play devil's advocate uh, when analyzing this stuff, we can definitely expect Bitcoin to drop back down to 35000 if support drops off at this 49,000 to 51,000 level. Uh, there you have it. Now, if Bitcoin can do what it did in the past and blow the top off this thing, um, you know, we, we definitely could be in for a treat. Uh, let's just go ahead and, and really see what some of these price tags are if Bitcoin by July, you know, has every bit of potential to hit 163,000, 139,000. I would say 139,000 to hmm, at least 167,000 by August. I would say it has potential to 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 rip to those levels uh, within the next few months. Also has the potential to go down. What goes up must come down, and I know it, nobody likes to hear it, uh, but it is the truth. And I would expect that when this thing does collapse, uh, let's look and see what kind of a time frame it took to hit bottom. So it took about a year for Bitcoin to hit bottom before we ripped again in that big, giant 2017 run. So a year out. I'm interested to see, uh, you know, where Bitcoin could be at. So August 21, let's just go to August 22. Oh, wow. So I definitely would say uh, you know, we'd be looking at at least something above the 27,000 range to, well, maybe quite possibly something, yeah, I'd say, I'd say after this collapse, this thing could retrace down to the 27,000 range-ish, uh, before it might take a few more years after that to, uh, to recover. Just an estimated guess, folks. And it's interesting that, you know, the fall of 2022, we have another Fibonacci time zone coming up. Uh, could be the start of another great um, multi-year bull run. Uh, however, as you can see, this pitchfork has proven true for a long time at least uh, well, at least 14, 15 years. So I would assume that we will see a, a trading within this channel unless things get really bad. Uh, as you can see, there's been a lot of ups and downs, but it <laughs> Bitcoin is looking like it still has gas left in the tank. And, and I do think, like I said, uh, this thing could definitely see uh, some serious heights, 200,000. You, you hear all these predictions and 
you know, looking at the channel, I think that uh, some of those predictions are definitely accurate. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, this is not financial advice. This is just TA constructive criticism and thinking outside of the box. We don't need anything fancy uh, to try and predict new highs and lows and this and that. Uh, but if you found this helpful and enjoyable, please, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell because if you're watching assets like Bitcoin and I drop a video on it, there might be some information in there you may or may not want to hear. So until next time, we'll see you guys on the flip side.